You want to start a YouTube channel, but it's looking like this, but you want it to look like this. Well, I'm going to show you how I did it. So now let's roll that new intro. What's up guys? If you're new here, I'm Mauricio and I post videos about filmmaking, photography, tutorials, and I even put some of my edits in here. So make sure you hit that like button down there. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how I set up my studio. Well, I mean, it's only my bedroom, but I'm going to call it my studio because I shoot and edit in here. Anyway, the first thing what you need to do is figure out the angle. Where are you gonna shoot? My room is pretty small, but that did not stop me from shooting or finding new backdrops for my videos. I've actually shot at several different locations, probably like five backdrops. And this one, this one is definitely my favorite one. You need to ask yourself this, what background do I want? Do you want to have depth, like what I have right now, or just a plain white background? Yes, you can shoot with just a white background, but in my opinion, I think it's better if you add some color. Maybe add some teal or blue, because that will give you contrast from you and the background. It will separate you from the background. And also you can create that teal and orange on camera. Or you can have a wallpaper or something that gives texture like what these other YouTubers are doing. Kind of like Peter McKinnon, like he has that wood background. But in this video, we're going to go for depth. Speaking of depth, you're probably wondering, well, how do I get depth? Well, you need a lens with a low aperture. I'm using a 50mm f1.8, but since this lens is for 4 frame cameras only, and I have the 80D, which is a crop sensor, it turns it into an 80mm, which I get even more depth because of the compression. If you use a wide angle lens, then you're not going to get that much depth, you're not going to get that much background blur, because you know it's wider and almost everything is in focus. I mean, yes, you can get closer, but then your face is gonna look all distorted. And for wide angle lens, it's more for like landscapes or real estate. If you wanna shoot people, then it's better if you have at least, at least a 50 millimeter, but the best focal length for faces is around 70 to 100 millimeter. I'm at 17 millimeter and aperture f2.8. And when I zoom in at 50 millimeter, you still don't get that much depth because the aperture is not as low as the 1.8 lens. You're gonna have to get a prime lens, maybe a Sigma. I mean, Sigma makes some of the best prime lenses out there. If you're interested, I'll put the link down there. All right, the next thing is lighting. This is definitely gonna make a huge difference on your studio. It will give the look that you want. And I mean, just in general, lighting is very important. You know, it depends what light you're using, how you're using, where you're placing it, how brightness it is, and I'm gonna explain all of that right now. The light I use for my key light is the Godox SL60W with the honeycomb grid, so that way it could light me up and not the background, because it makes the background darker and it looks more cinematic. Also for your key light, you need to have a diffuser so that way the light is soft and flattering. I mean, look how soft this looks. Here's how it will look like with no diffuser, and now with diffuser. Luckily, my Godox light comes with a diffuser dome, but if you have these lights like my newer light, what you can do is have something white, like a shirt, a curtain, or napkins. I saw Casey Neistat doing this and thought that was such a great idea, and it works just fine. If you're in a budget, definitely do this, and it works perfect. The next tip is where you place it. I like placing my light on the side so that way it can create shadows on the opposite side and creating depth, and it looks more cinematic. Also, if you're like, if you want to look less skinny or like not that fat, having shadow on the chin would definitely make you look skinnier. And I mean, I'm already skinny, so I don't need that. But for people who are overweight, you know, or if you have a fat chin, <laughs> yes, you can put your light directly in front, but it's going to look more flat and it's not going to create that many shadows. This technique is used more for like beauty or like comedy films. They're not trying to make you look more cinematic. Last is how bright your light is. I usually have it around 20 to 40%. Higher than that, it is just way too bright. I'm not gonna be able to shoot cause it's just, it's gonna be bothering me and it's not gonna be comfortable for my eyes. My settings right now on my camera is 50 shutter speed, 1 over 50 shutter speed, F 1.8 and probably ISO 200. And then I'm gonna dim my light higher at 100% and these are the settings. Here are the settings down here when I use the light at 100%. 
It probably looks fine on camera, but my eyes are gonna be burning out right now and I'm not gonna be able to shoot comfortable. So I do not recommend shooting at 100% with your light. Also, it's probably gonna create more shadows and your face is not gonna look as flattering. The lighting is not gonna be that soft because the light is like super powerful. The next light is your background light. I always have a blue or teal gel on my back light so that way it can create contrast not only in depth and darkness but in color as well you will be able to create that teal and orange on camera with no LUTs. You know, you create it with just lighting, which is amazing, man. Like, and it will make color creating way easier because pretty much all you have to do is just turn up the exposure. The last tip is background. I know I already talked about background, but I'm gonna be talking about props. Yes, it is important what's on your frame, but also what's not on your frame. Remove anything that may be distracting to your viewers and add some props that's relevant to what you're talking about or what your channel is about. Like for an example, in the background I added like a drone, some lenses, well because this is a photography and filmmaking channel so that's why I added those in the background. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, you don't need a huge space to make a YouTube studio. I mean, my room is pretty small. I mean, if I can do it, you can definitely do it. So that's pretty much it. If you learned something from this video, make sure you like, Subscribe and I'm out.